is the official the official part here uh, for the engine. Uh, and uh, welcome to this station, new 13 liter engine station. Uh, what I'm trying to go to do here is to give you a brief overview, slide in on the on the engine itself, which is the, the centerpiece, of course, in this drive line here. Uh, with me today, I have Brand, one of the test engines we used on the track, just to show you, to give you an impression of how it looks like. And uh, of course, with this new super engine, uh, we are introducing something really, really unique in terms of having an engine reaching all the way up to 50% uh, brake thermal efficiency. Uh, and that's it's actually certified with 50% brake thermal efficiency, and that's unique for the truck industry so far. And this engine's this size. Uh, but uh, let me just give you a little bit of a background. In 2020, uh, we introduced uh, the new upgraded V8 engine, as you might remember. With that one, we also took the G33 CM gearbox into the program. And it's now being completed. That, that marked the start for the new uh, future driveline of a completely new powertrain from Scania. So uh, we're following it up now with the new 13 liter engine, which is the first, uh, the first engine with a completely new platform. From the ground up, uh, nothing is actually being uh, um, carried over from the, the previous range. We touched that on, on the fuel filter section. Among other things. But let me give you a short overview by give you a fly in on the engine <coughs> from this point of view. Uh, this engine comes in four power outlets, 420 to 560, and uh, it is uh, probably the most advanced engine in the truck industry uh, ever, and it's here to maintain the Scania's position, premium position for the decades to come. The most obvious part of the engine, uh, change of the engine, the new platform, is the dual overhead camshaft uh, single cylinder head. And that makes a lot of contributions in the engine development. Uh, I will give you a few. You can here see one of the advantages, and that is uh, the CRB mentioned by you, by Lorna, the compression release brake. On this engine, a lot of work has been done to increase and to uh, improve the aspiration of the engine. This reversed rotation turbocharger, for example, is, is one of them, completely Scania design. Uh, together with the new twin SCR system uh, and you will add blue injection points, you, you now have a system that works and operates in a very, very good way, increasing both the engine power and decreasing fuel consumption, which is something of the holy grail within engine design. And to do that, we need to have this twin SR system to take care of the uh, of the exhaust emissions coming from the engine. And this is doing this in a very complete way. Uh, we have also new exit from the exhaust underneath, it's a diffuser. With this engine and with this new SR system, operating in all engine uh, revs and all engine operations, we have been managed to, to increase the, uh, the peak cylinder pressure. That means we have done much improvements on the inlet and outlet side, but we've also uh, increased the amount of fuel injected with quick dump uh, injectors here. And that gives us a peak cylinder pressure of 250 bars, which is approximately uh, Coming from the, the DC-12 engine in the beginning of the, of the 90s, this is a lot. We have also revised a lot of, of different internal surfaces. And to this, to, together with this, we have introduced a new powerful engine management system, a new high-pressure fuel pump to regulate and, and to, 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 ride, to give the system a complete one. The, the low-pressure part, we, you will see that later, that's been removed back to the tank and uh, replaced, repositioned, sorry. And that one is now uh, not on the engine anymore, which gives us more space on the engine and uh, less. This engine is uh, on pre 
delivered performance and high re reliability and of course uh, fuel efficiency for the decade to come here. So some technical highlights or, or uh, um, just from, the, from this. The single cylinder with dual lower cam shaft, yeah, that allows us to go for improved com combustion because we can, as I said, improve the aspiration. We can improve the injection of the fuel, but we can also, uh, in this engine, uh, we, with this engine, we have also reduced internal friction. Both all the surfaces in the engine, the bearings and, and etc., and also the external auxiliary components. Uh, the compressor, the steering pumps, everything that is fitted on the engine, also the water pump. Uh, with a new twin SCR system, this makes us really, really neat. Some of the design criteria: when we have an engine that has been working so good as the current range, uh, given that we have actually five years in a row now won the Green Party Award, uh, how do we improve? How do we improve our fuel consumption and and uh, as environmental purposes. Uh, yeah, we looked at the engine, a 13 liter engine, we knew that it would be. We knew that the single cylinder head marking actually in the Scania tradition uh, had to go because we needed more stability in the complete engine build-up. So the structure would mean the single cylinder head that allowed dual overhead camshaft, of course. Uh, we wanted to keep the low rev strategy. We knew that we needed to raise the, the peak cylinder pressure to Pmax. Uh, and, and that's uh, quite a lot. And uh, we know that we wanted higher power outputs, but also lower fuel consumption. So essential for this, burning more fuel in the cylinder, raising the pressure, raising the temperatures, we, we need to have efficient after treatment system taking care of that. With the twin SAR and dual dosing system, we, we, we achieve this. And that's an enabler for actually the high uh, peaks peaks in pressure, which creates a lot of, of, of more uh, raw knocks on the engine. Uh, with this, we get a robust and precise valve train, train. We get improved gas exchange, improved cooling and lubrication, and we get the compression release brake. And if you look here, uh, you can see the compression release brake installed here. Uh, it's actually fitted on all the six cylinders, and it works in, in, in firing order. And uh, of course, as, as normal, it works on the, on the compression stroke. As shortly before the compression stroke piston reach the top dead center, we quickly open the exhaust valve to, to, to release the compressed air. And that spools up the turbocharger here. The turbocharger itself, it then gives a, a feed pressure on the, on the inlet side. And that's the way uh, we provide or, or increase or boost the, the braking effect. Uh, we are steering that with the, uh, you cannot see it, but it's underneath the, the turbocharger um, wastegate. And that's the way the, the system works generally. It gives us effect and a braking effect about 350 kilowatts addition, negative kilowatts, so I have to say. Uh, so with this system, we uh, reach we actually reach uh, with seven kilo added weight. We reach uh, very powerful brake effect, braking effect, and that can be added to the CCAP, the Cruise Control Active Prediction. And with map data, we can then increase even the, the uh, performance on the road. It can be combined with a retarder, and we get a very nice driving machine. And together with an intuitive operation from the, from the driver seat, it's easy to, to, to operate this engine with, uh, with uh, here. Um, it's also coming with an engine-driven PQ. Uh, you can see that one on the side here. Uh, this engine-driven PQ has been beefed up, and uh, it now provides uh, 
possibility to take out 1,000 newton meter from this one, which means we can actually go for for very heavy installations on that. The customer values here, uh, we have a superior energy utilization. The BT of the 50% gives us both better fuel consumption and reduced CO2 loss. We have improved drivability with 900 uh, RPM, the, the talk of uh, a full torque from 900 RPM or down to 900 RPM if you're coming from above. Uh, the high productivity uh, of the driveline integration with the, with the gearing and the gear system. Increased payload, not only by the CRB, but you can we'll hear more. We have a robust design with a high uptime. We have extended the service life and we, have, we are ready for renewable fuels. And of course, this is the, 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 the table of uh, what we actually get. So uh, compared to the previous range we have now increased power we have increased support so 2800 newton meter will be available on the strongest one and it's compatible with, with renewable fuels all engines can be run on, on hpu for example and also biofuel pharma the same will be possible to you people over air high torque philosophy improved combustion reduced friction and the state of the art emission control. Gives us lower fuel consumption, higher productivity, increased payload, and increased uptime. And the system, you will see more of that uh, with uh, flexible maintenance and pro care, will give us a possibility to, to uh, also have more time on the road. So, questions?